What is it about Bruins captains that makes them keep getting smaller? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I think that when, you know, when you get a guy that's eight feet tall, uh, there's only one direction to go. Don't you worry that at this rate, <laughs> it, I mean, 2025, we're down to 5'3". 2035, two foot nine. Yeah. I Googled two foot nine hockey player and <laughs> Brad Marshall that came, came up. up. So that will be about the size I am in, in 2035. Do you consider yourself a short king? A short king? Yeah. Uh, you know the term? N- not really. You it's know what, the short king term? No. Yeah, it's like just a, a small person who like owns the fact that they're small and is proud of it. Yeah, I mean, I don't, it's not something that I ever really cared about. You know, I, I feel like I don't really overthink anything like that. You know, I I'm, I'm, feel like I'm pretty confident no matter what I got going on. And, and uh, yeah, I own it, you know. You got you to, gotta, everyone's got their own pros and cons of things that they're good at, the things that, uh, you know, you got to own and, you know, can't change this. So you got to make the most of it. Preaching the choir here. Yeah. Uh, did you ever see yourself becoming captain of the Bruins? No. Uh, now, you know, up until about the end of the season last year, I never, I never ever thought it would be a possibility. Um, and then when you saw the guys that that were leaving, um, you know, I, being the oldest guy and 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 the most seen, senior guy in the team, I think it it started to kind of click that it could be a possibility. But definitely not something. Um, throughout my entire career, childhood, I even, I really even hoped or wanted to do because I just never thought it'd be a possibility, you know, like it's a big enough dream and hope and wish just to make the NHL, let alone try to be a captain. I mean, you look, you know, when you grow up and you watch like the captains are, are they're the best players to ever play the game, you know, like I grew up watching like Ray Bork and Stevie Y and, mm-hmm. and Joe Sackick and, and those guys, like you don't ever think that you'd be on that level. And I'm not saying I'm on that level, but it's just never something I thought about before um, until a couple of months ago. And I was like, man, this could actually be a reality. And uh, it's pretty cool. In your younger days, like you obviously partied and you were a bit of a wild card no. out there. <laughs> <laughs> never. You, two guys what? with the same name. There's common confusion. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, it's no, like but- Sebastian Ajo. This was, there was a different Brad Marshall. Yeah. <laughs> But like, was there ever a point where either like you grew up or you were like, fuck, I got to kind of like reel it in because I got a good thing going here. I'm like, I'm a really good player. I'm on track. Yeah, I had a lot of moments. Yeah. Um, You know, where I I had to kind of step back. Now, I was always pretty disciplined with trying to pick my spots. It definitely got away from me at times. Um, And I had a couple older guys that that pulled me aside and, you know, kind of told me I had to pull my act together a little bit and and. focus a little bit more, but I think I had a couple contract years pretty close together. Um, and, and I went into those summers very dedicated, uh, and really wanting to prove something. And I think that after I went through that and I realized success you can have by, you know, really focusing on a goal or trying to achieve something, uh, it kind of all came together. And then, you know, you come in and started paying more attention to some of the older guys and, and it just kind of became an everyday thing and kind of pulled it together, luckily, because if not, you know, I'd be somewhere I wouldn't want to be yeah, right, now. right yeah. now. How much does Patrice Bergeron remain part of this team? Like when a player retires, do they stay on the group text? Uh, yeah, yeah, for a period of time, you know, he, I, I think he, he kind of pulled himself out at one point. He's, he's very respectful. Um, you know, and, and he's given everything he possibly can to the game. And, and uh, you know, I think he he doesn't want to overstep his boundaries. And, you know, he understands the situation. And as much as he would love to continue to be part of it, you know, he, he knows that it's kind of the team is a team. And, and while he was playing, he wouldn't have wanted older other guys that have moved on to be in the group. It's just not it's not right. So. Um, you know, he still pops in and, and checks in on guys and, and checks in on the team and um, still very active around here. Um, you know, everybody loves seeing him. Everybody has a ton of respect for Berge and would love for him to be around more often. But, uh, you know, it's, it's also I think it's got to be tough on him, uh, especially this time of year. You know, you're, you're typically in a routine and he's probably, you know, trying to find his own routine now. So 
um, yeah, something he's just working through. And but yeah, he'll be around definitely throughout the year. It dawned on me that uh, when the group text became a thing for teams, this happened while Chara was captain of the Bruins. Yeah. What was he like as a texter, and what's the he would the just send a ma- he send got? something in the mail, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, he he was he was great, you know. You know what Z was really good about if he had something to say, um, you know, he would say it directly to you, and and you know he was very good about. I mean, obviously he he'd get in the group chats and stuff, but um, he was very comfortable just going to guys every single day and 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 letting them know what we needed to do or, um, you know trying to help guys out individually that way. Uh, it definitely became more of a thing as, as the years went on. But, um, you know, even with the group chats, it's not like, you know, like Bergy and Z had led the way in the group chat all the time. Like that, you know, it, it's, it's friendly banter mm-hmm. 99% of the time, you know. And then, um, you know, we usually deal with things in person, not over text message. What was your first, like, memory of Patrice Bergeron? I remember Bergeron said that, there was some training camp drill and he was just like watching from the other side of the ice. And there was this kid who was trying way too hard in the drills and like going first and everything. And he was like, what's this guy's story? Yeah. Well, I mean, I got a couple of birdie actually, uh, when I was 17, he would have been, I think maybe 20. Mm-hmm. Um, or I was 16. He was 19. I can't remember. It might've been, when was the Laco year? Uh, 2013. So with, oh, no, the, the first Laco? Oh, four Oh five. I don't even know how old he would have been at that point, but he was it, 19 I, then. So he was 20. He was in the, so I think he was 20, maybe. And he could have been playing in junior. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was 17. And they were having an exhibition game in Moncton. I saw him, and I was like, he, was, he looks unbelievable. <laughs> and I was like, man, this guy should, should be in junior right now playing against us, and he's dominating the NHL, you know? I was like, that's wild. Um, and he had played in the queue, so all the guys were talking about him. I think that's, you know, one of, one of the reasons why we were, we were talking about him. But... Um, and then, yeah, I remember that specifically in camp. He was coming back from his concussion. I think it was the next year, and I was coming in and to training camp, and we were doing a one-on-one battle. And uh, I lined up against him, and he was just, like, on another. Like, he's so strong and, and competitive and um, kind of put me in my place because, you know, I thought I was doing well. And, you know, we were all with the training camp guys, and he was out there trying to get back into it, and he just showed up everybody and <laughs> kind of put us all in our place a little bit. So it was pretty cool. I got to ask you, what's your uh, what's your relationship with Twitter? Because you're not on it now, Mm-mm. but you have been known to jump in there and yeah. stir the pot a little bit. Dude, I love I love getting on there and just like everybody gets so emotional and takes everything so personal on Twitter. <laughs> and like they take themselves so serious and like people just need to chill out like just across the world. It's it's absurd. And you get on there and everyone's just angry, you know, and it's like just lighten up. And, and I love like, you know, people like to fire shots off and never expect to get it back. You know, so when you do it, they just like lose their mind and people love it. It's, it's entertainment. But, um, you know, ever since the new one came out, I'm not paying for that stuff. I was um, going to say, what, what, <laughs> is that what is a financial reason? <laughs> it's a financial, I'm not doing it. Only you two know? years left on your it. deal. Uh, like. I know, but you know, it's just, and someone took my handle now anyway. So oh, did they yeah, really? I'm not going okay. back and building up and you know, I was wondering thing. what the last draw was. <laughs> yeah, that was it. They uh, the league sent something out about a boat to and I said, I'll get rid of it. It's not good for me. I get nothing from it. You know yeah, what I mean? But, like we do. Yeah. We, it is good to be sad though, because like the message behind all of your things, it's always a reply. And the message, it's always dressed up because it's you, but it's generally like stop. <laughs> yeah. We're like, don't do that. Well, favorite, that, that, that shut it your is pie like, hole was a very good yeah, one. Shut yeah. your pie hole, stop <laughs> chirping Krug. Like. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean that's obviously like it, it's a it's a great way to you know build a brand like i get all that stuff but i i i have a problem with people always going out and attacking other people and i mean i say that but i do that for my job every day <laughs> I was gonna you know? say, a little <laughs> Dude, but, there. yeah people have shit that i'm sure from 10 15 20 years ago that like they probably want back people are going to want now back in like 20 years people are gonna be like we were just being horrible to each yeah, other yeah you know like I, I i really truly believe like you know be a good person, treat people the way that you want to be treated. And, um, but also like, I, I think it's appropriate to stick up for people that can't stick up for themselves. And, and, um, you know, if pe- someone's being an idiot, tell them like, and there's a, like an well, art to being mean, like there's an art. To yeah. Be right. like, well, you need to have some thick skin because typically if you're, there is an art to be, yeah. but like, if you're going to be an asshole, like 
don't get upset if someone's an asshole to you. Right. You know what oh, I mean? 100%. Like, and that's what kind of bothers me is like if you if you say something to someone and then they just have a meltdown that when they're coming after you, buddy, chill out. Also, there's an element of like just guys being dudes where it's <laughs> like, let's let's put take some shots at each other. Here, just let it go. You're, yeah, exactly. right? like, You're the reason I learned the word. I'd never heard the term pigeon before. And you called me a pigeon on Twitter <laughs> and I went up to you the next day. I don't know if you remember this. I was like, hey, and you were like, hi. And I was like, so what's a pigeon? And you just looked at me. It was the shortest conversation we ever had. You said, it's a bird. And then you walked away. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't really. I mean, I, I recall the, the alt. I don't remember the next day, that's but amazing. that's funny. But. I was like, I think he's mad at me. Yeah. Or like, we're better friends. Yeah. Or? So like that, I think Gregory Campbell started that. He was, he was a mouthy thing. And um, he'd always get me riled up and get me going and stuff. And, and he, was, he was pretty funny. The other one, he'd always call everybody as a Gary. You know, I've heard that <laughs> yeah. several times. It's outrageous. That one kills me. My favorite one was uh, grocery stick. That's yeah. also one got from you. Which you know, do you know grocery I stick? I sure do. It separate, separates, separates the, the good, good the guys who are playing from yeah. the guys who aren't playing. Um, what was the story with you not uh, doing the the cup DVD? Uh, I was in one. Uh, yeah, I was in one. Um, I, I was on an absolute bender uh that that entire time and i showed up that day they were doing it and i i couldn't walk so they just uh they said you know unfortunately i, I actually regret that i didn't know we were doing it that day that would have been an incredible uh thing to be part of and you know to have to look back on um it, it's pretty cool to see it now and disappointed to see that i you know i, I had to miss out on that but i had a great time well do they, do they sit you down no, they, they just didn't tell me. They, you're just, not they, they didn't say anything. Okay. I mean, breakup day that year, breakup day, you guys threw out the first pitch and you're walking in. It's only obviously only one team in the league gets a good breakup day. You guys walk in like the rock stars that you were and you have a Mike Cameron jersey on and you're holding, I think, a bottle of tequila yeah. and everyone's trying to like play it straight and you yell down the hall to the media. You go, who likes Red Sox? Me! And they push you into like a side room. And we were all so excited. We were like, Brad Marsh. And this was back when, you're very funny now, you're very cool now. This was back when like, you yeah. were a real shit stir. Yeah. We were like, he is going to say some things <laughs> about the Canucks and the Canadians. They're yeah. like, we're gonna write books. We're gonna have a field day we're with gonna this. Yeah. for the rest of our lives. And every now and then the room, the door would open and you were just hanging out. You were you were fine. You were just hanging out. And every time you would start to get up, somebody would just like casually like <laughs> ease you back down. Of just like yeah. you are not fucking going anywhere. Yeah. But you rock for that. Uh, today is your lucky day, though. Taylor does Taylor's version. Uh, we're going to drop you into the Stanley Cup DVD. I'm going to set up the scenario because I, I rewatched it yesterday. Awesome DVD. Yeah, I, that, that team fucking rocked. All right, so there's a montage of the Bruins. Look into that camera. There's a montage of the Bruins being physical with the Canucks. Claude Julian says, we really had to make it hard on their best players. And now it cuts to Brad Marchand. And, I and he's talking about, want. yeah. Julian Am I actually said, doing this? Yeah. yeah. Yeah? All right. It's your time for redemption. Yeah. This is my time. I'm going to de-age you. So Claude says that we really had to make it hard on, on their best players. Yeah, they, 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 we wanted to make it really hard on their hard players, on their good players. Um, so we knew we were going to target the Sedin brothers. And uh, Kessler, who, you know, we think at the time was already hurt. But, um, you know, and then especially after Horty got hurt, then we just had to go after. It, it was kind of an open season after that. Everyone was going after everybody on the team. Um, you know, and then there was a moment where I grabbed one of the Sedin brothers in front of the net and uh, we had a little cutoff session. But that was just because uh, my boy Seggs in the corner getting double teamed by a couple of guys. So I had to try to return the favor. Um, but we're very close now, Sedin and I, so we're all good. I was going to do like two more, but I'm not doing any more <laughs> after that. Uh, so, uh, uh, lastly, uh, this is a new show and we are trying to get some like good clips, get some buzz. Uh, could you announce your intentions to retire? No, you have to say no. Like I'm not saying announce that you're retired. Just say that at some point when I'm done playing hockey, I will retire. All right. At some point when I'm done playing hockey, I will retire. Oh, first guest. <laughs> Big scoop. We will cut that and just say I will retire. Cool. Uh, last one for me. 
<laughs> over your over <laughs> your like career, you. over your career, there's there's gonna be like a pretty lengthy compilation on YouTube of funniest Brad Marshan moments. Yeah, there's a couple good ones out yeah. there now. <laughs> what do you think is the funniest Brad Marshan moment of your career? The funniest? Yeah. Or dumbest? I've got a lot of. I got more dumb ones than funny ones. I think the dumb you ones probably coaches are funny. You had coaches threatening you in like 2012. Like it was, it got like yeah. dangerous at some point. Hey, oh yeah, that's right. Levine. Yeah. Levine. I think it was chirping you, right? AV. Yeah. An right? AV. Was it AV? Uh, Shirelli walks in, is just like walking around the hall that day, waiting for media to be like, hey, would you like to talk? Because he had to be like, what the fuck is going on? Like guys are threatening our players now that that second when you guys played the next year bonkers yeah that was that was wild i think when he was in new york i think he cheered me too yeah there was a thing with uh there was a thing with um fuck there was a thing with longquist uh hank yeah longquist. and claude said after he was like well we think like hank's gonna get some acting awards <laughs> and then he did you so dirty because then everybody was like it, it became a glass house thing yeah. and people, so then everyone was like talking shit about the bruins yeah. and I like to do that yeah. career then. I think we all have to agree. Dumbest moment of my career. Um, I don't know if we all have to agree because I have no idea where you're going right now. Dumbest moment I'm trying to could think. Be, there's, could be a number there's, of a, there's a few. Uh, I mean, a very blatant, obvious one would probably be the Callahan one. But... I think my, my, sis, I oh, knew. the one on Jari wasn't very smart either. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I can't, you know, I'm not gonna laugh. Uh, that the, one wasn't very smart. There were some, those are a couple bad, those are a couple bad ones. What sucked about those though, and now I'm being an old guy, is like you'd go two weeks and then everyone would write there, like Brad Marchand is, you go two weeks without doing something and people would be like, now he's this, now he's that. And I, I'm so glad that just there's a lot of time has passed and now it's just Brad Marchand is one of the best hockey players in the, the world. People for so long wanted to say, okay, you're definitely this. You're yeah. definitely that. You've turned a new leaf. You've done whatever. And you would go, you'd score 35 goals and you'd maybe do something regrettable. And people would be like, all right, so what is he then? It's like, an idiot. Thir- <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> And we're Appreciate it. Yeah. 